I was watching a really funny show on Netflix now. Um, just off the you can use it or not. But it's called uh, Norm MacDonald Has Talk Show, I think is what it's called. And, it, of course, Norm MacDonald has uh, passed away. But it was a really funny um, talk show. I don't know how many episodes there are, but, like, the first one, he has David Spade on. And they, uh, you know, do the typical interview, and he's got some blue cards that are really stupid questions, but he asks them anyway, and then he goes, we're going to go to commercial. And David's like, you don't even have any sponsors, do you? You're going to commercial? And he goes, no, no, we're going to commercial. And so then he keeps talking to Spade, but I'm watching this, mm -hmm. so obviously they don't go to commercial. He just keeps talking to him and asking him, like, you know, is this, have you ever paid for heterosexual sex? And asking him about his drug usage, and it's all... <laughs> being used in the show, so it's pretty funny. Mm. Anyway, so we're rolling. Yeah, we're rolling. So uh, did you watch the Oscars, Liv? I watched the highlights, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't take like three hours of my life to watch right. anything in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting show. Mm -hmm. I, I watched some of it just because I really like um, Jimmy Kimmel. I keep wanting to call him the other Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon, but uh, Jimmy Kimmel's the mm -hmm. one I like. Jimmy Fallon, I mean... If you're listening, Jimmy Fallon, we would love to have you on our show, but I don't know. He, he just seems like a nice guy, a little more contrived, a little more showboaty, whereas Jimmy Fallon yeah. is just... I'm trying to picture both of them in my head, and I can't tell the difference. Oh, uh, well, you're not picturing either of them. I then. can't watch... I, aren't they both late night? They are both late yeah, night, and I'm, Seth Meyers is out there, too. And I'm sleeping. Uh, well, you can watch it in the morning, like I yeah. do on YouTube. After the 7 o'clock news, I'm out. Yeah. But uh, Jimmy Kimmel was the host. He did a great job. Of course, uh, the host last year was... Chris Rock. Chris Rock. And uh, do you remember what happened last year? He got smacked. He did, by Muhammad Ali, a.k.a. Will Smith. Yeah. And uh, so Will Smith was the butt of a lot of really uh, good jokes. Was he there? No, he's banned. He can't go for 10 years. <laughs> he's, that's the punishment. Oh, wow. So uh, Jimmy Kimmel did a good job. I'm sure that. he's not too upset about it. But uh, you had your typical controversies. This uh -huh. person should have been nominated, or this should have happened, or that shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. um, did you watch uh, the Hugh Grant did a uh, yeah, red carpet interview? I did saw, you see that? I saw that. He he was not having it. Yeah, what was the deal? I don't know. He he just seemed like he was kind of over his career. He was just like, nah, it's fine. He did not throw that poor interviewer a bone at all. I felt she, horrible for her. She was trying so hard, and you could tell when he walked away, she was like. Yeah, yeah, she gave three or four subject matters, yeah. and he, like, you know, what kind of suit are you wearing? He's like, one made by my tailor, and that was... Well, he was like, what kind of clothes am yeah. I wearing? Yeah, it's like, he obviously thought somebody should be asking a better question, but... Yeah, and then she's like, who's your tailor? Oh, I don't know his name. Yeah, it's freaking uh, the Oscars and the red carpet. Don't go on the red carpet if you don't want to ask contrived exactly. questions. Exactly, that's what I don't like about stars, it's like they get so annoyed with... Yeah paparazzi and fans and it's like you asked for this right like, this is what you wanted i think that's right now speaking of uh chris rock did you see the chris rock live comedy event uh, i think a week or so ago again i saw highlights oh uh, is it i guess that's our generational differences like i feel like i have to watch things uh -huh. and you want to watch them digested by other people yeah i just prefer to get the reels and highlights like, right i don't want to sit down and watch something unless it's something i really like so what did you think of the reels and highlights you got of Chris Rock? Um, I felt like I had mixed reactions. It was, I wish he would have done it sooner because mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, it's been a year. Right. And like, I, it, you kind of missed the mark. Yeah. But I think that it's good that he was still able to get out there and talk about it. And mm -hmm. I don't like when comedy gets shut down. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I mean, I like both of them. Not that I buddies but I yeah. like um, their bodies of work mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's certainly a good example of anybody is capable of losing their shit in any <laughs> given yeah. circumstance yeah I don't think I ever would have done what Will Smith did because yeah. I've never smacked anybody in the face right um, especially in front of a crowd but I don't know I'm also I've never been like I don't not like Chris Rock but I've never been a fan of his movies right just like adam sandler like i don't not like him as a person but if he's in a movie i'm like oh, it's probably not that great well that's the nature of their movies is to be like i don't of, think they're funny like we don't share the same humor right well a different generation again exactly. they're my age yeah um i don't know what comedy movies or, or type of comedy movies do you like i don't know 
I'm more. I don't know. I There's a lot of stupid that. ones. Yeah, and, and they're sort of, they're they're stupid, I but like, they're funny stupid. I like Borat. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't like that one. I love Borat. Oh. I think that's so funny. Mm-hmm. And I like The Office, so I think I like more okay. comedy. I don't know what the word would be for like Borat and The Office. A little bit of reality or fake reality. Yeah, but I don't like really cheesy right. comedy or. Um, yeah, Annoying. happily ever after, yeah. sort of. Mm-hmm. I'm with you there. They are yeah. contrived. But, but, I mean, Chris Rock and Adam Sandler are comedians who do movies to, you know, pay the bills yeah. and, uh, for whatever reason. Like, I like Will Ferrell, but yeah. I don't like all his movies. Yeah. I think some of them are pretty bad. Yeah, that's probably true, too. Although he has more good ones in that genre than most. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the Chris Rock special, I would say... Um, and I understand it's been edited because mm-hmm. it was live initially, which is very courageous mm-hmm. and frankly unnecessary for Chris Rock to do at this stage of his career. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I agree with you. I think everything he said, he was certainly entitled to say. Mm-hmm. It seemed a little angry at the end and a little, like, not comedic, mm-hmm. but just, like, going after Will Smith and calling him a bitch, literally, <laughs> many times. Yeah. Um, which, again, if somebody punches me, I probably would want to call them names, too. Uh-huh. Um, but I just, it didn't seem funny, um, which is what yeah. it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, but, uh, but we'll say it was, uh, it was definitely interesting. To your point of, um, he should have said it sooner, my understanding is he was touring around with that set and with pieces oh, of that and it set. it didn't get said. He, well, it got said, but it didn't get performed mm-hmm. in one venue. Because by the time somebody does a Netflix special, um, they have worked out various pieces of that, if not done the whole hour or whatever it is. A bunch of times, yeah. two audiences of one, two, three, four hundred. Yeah. And then they finally culminated into this one big thing. Yeah. I like Bill Burr a lot, thinking of comedians I like. Mm-hmm. What I do you like about him? I think he's funny. Because um, he's a type of comedian where, in my head, when he talks, I'm not looking at him. I'm, like, seeing imagery and stories, and he's kind of, it's like mm-hmm. a movie in your head. And that's what I like. Right. And then there's also a girl named Taylor something. Yeah, she, the mid life or the early life crisis yes i think funny. she's so I, yes oh, yeah. i think she's so funny i think me funny. and her are so similar yeah yeah, yeah. except she's a really successful rich yeah. comedian and yeah you're successful and but i'm not a comedian so no, he's no funny, i think though. she's really funny yeah i like her stuff she was a christian comedian uh, really yeah, yeah yeah wow she's definitely turned a corner there she did turn, turn the corner um yeah i've started to ask uh, some of the comedians that i work with um that or through, and I get to open for to join us on our podcast. So hopefully, we'll start to have some of them for our listeners coming up. Yeah, they can be funny. I learn a lot from them um, backstage and after the shows. And uh, clearly, they have a lot more years doing comedy than I do. So mm-hmm. it's it's fun to uh, it's fun to learn from them and sit knee to knee backstage while the, the middle person, the feature, is going on. And it's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a funny story about. Uh, Dom Herrera, he was one of the first national guys that I opened up for several years ago. And uh, if you don't know who he is, he's been in a lot of movies. He's he's older. He's real old. He's, I mean, he was on Johnny Carson. He was on all the late night shows coming up. He was in The Big Lebowski. Um, and uh, so I meet him before the show. And, um, and, and my job, among other things, is to ask them how they want to be introduced. And I do a little research. So I have you know, some of the background, so if they don't tell me, at least I have a few things I could say. But uh, he says, uh, yeah, 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 just say he was the voice of Hey Arnold. Now, oh, was he? Well, um, go with me, but he, 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 was, he did cartoon voiceovers, uh-huh. and, and he was part of that show. Yeah. And, and I did know that, um, but I thought that was a strange uh, sort of credential or credit for him to ask me to singularly introduce him with. So, uh, so you know, I go on stage, I do my set, and then I say, you know, here's the guy we all came here to see. You know him as the voice of Hey Arnold, give it up for Tom Herrera. And people are clapping, and he comes out, and he's like looking at me funny. He's giving me this fake mobster kind of look. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little sheepish, you know, try to sort of give him a fist bump or a high five, and, and really wouldn't have any of it. So I walk off, I go back to sit in my little spot deep in the audience, and he says, um, that fucking little alien bod guy, I gave him one thing to say, and he fucked that up too. And for about 20 minutes, he roasts me. Um, and, and he does do some of the Comedy Central roasts. He did the roast of Bruce Willis, so he's quite good at it. Yeah. And he just, 20 minutes of his set, this was immediately post-COVID, so, um, you know, 
he was still working out some jokes, I'm assuming, but he had no trouble just making fun of me. Um, and I'm shrinking down in my seat and pretty much figuring, we have five more shows to do that weekend. And, uh, you know, clearly he's going to replace me. And uh, I got to come back up after he's done and, you know, thank everybody, remind them to tip their waitresses, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so, you know, he's still backstage when I come off stage. Um, and I said, you know, Mr. Herrera, I'm, I'm so sorry I, I, I screwed that up for you. And he goes, no, you said it just like I wanted you to. So uh, He just wanted to make a set out of you. Yeah, so, and I, I've had other comedians that, that yeah. do that. They just ask you to say something. Mm -hmm. So that, that was brutal, but uh, others yeah. do various versions of that. It doesn't usually last 20 minutes, but that was, a, that was a long 20 minutes of my life. I forgot about that show. Oh, you were at that one? Hey Arnold. Oh, <laughs> I oh, thought no. you came to see me over for Don Marrera. No, I forgot about <laughs> Hey Arnold. I can, it's like, good. hear to my head, you know, the Hey Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. I think I look a little like me and my it. husband like the other day we were talking about our favorite childhood shows and that one did not come up uh, what were they um I liked Little Bear I don't remember those Franklin the Turtle okay sure I loved Teletubbies yeah he yeah I liked the vacuum in it the vacuum there was a vacuum yeah that was uh, one yeah. of the characters yeah it was a character and then I liked Rolly Polioli yeah he's cute that was Bear in the Big Blue House yes and then I liked yeah. Zoom yeah, Zoom. It was like a science show. Was it a reboot of Zoom? Because I had Zoom when I was younger. It was a bunch of little kids, and they would do like science yeah. experiments, and there was a bunch of shapes. Did they say, we're going to Zoom, 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 yeah. Zoom? Yeah, yeah. We're going to Zoom, 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 Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I bet you it was a reboot. That unless was you a... were just watching yeah. old 70s uh, I, shows. I always wanted to be a Zoom kid. Yeah, yeah, those are good. I had another. I had other ones in that genre. Um, called the, there was one called The Electric Company. That was just pretty cool. You remember the electric company, Tony? Wow. My mother. <laughs> okay. Hey, you guys. Yeah, that was a good one. Of course, Sesame Street. Were you a Sesame Street fan? No. No. I never watched PBS. Oh. Uh, uh, I didn't like educational things. Right. Yeah, and it's continued, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't like Arthur. Really? Didn't like Sesame Magic Street. Magic School Bus. Mm. Yeah. I never liked teachers either. Oh, uh, I got Anything you. with teachers, I'm like, count me out. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. Huh. What do you attribute that to? Teachers never liked me. Yeah. I was always out in the hall. Uh, I was what? always a bad, bad girl. What 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 did you do that was bad? Just talked a they lot? Just, teachers want you to conform to what they want you to be. Right. And I was always taught to not do that. Uh, by and your I parents? was always taught not to lie. Yeah. And in school, you have to lie a lot to get through. Uh, well, you have to cater to your audience. Yeah, but I was always a very, like... Um, I, if I was told not to lie, I wouldn't lie. Like, I don't sugarcoat it. Right. And I've that never, that. and in grade school, that was really hard. Yeah. And so they just say, you need to lie more. Go yeah. Like, off. if I didn't like someone, I would just straight up be like, you're a B. Oh. Uh, in, yeah. like, the fourth grade. Yeah, that's probably not a good quality. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, the teacher would be like, that's not nice. I'd be like, but it's the truth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I just never liked teachers. Or West Specifically, I never liked English teachers. Uh, you liked when they spoke other languages? <laughs> no. English teachers are the worst. Yeah. I, I was an English major. So Have you I, ever had an English teacher that you actually liked? I did. I did. I liked, I mean, for me it was a choice of evils. I was also not so academically inclined until I got to college and law school. But uh, the only thing I did consistently okay to well was uh, theater and English. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I could diagram sentences, I could read things and regurgitate about them, I could write essays. So, yeah, I like my English teachers relative to math and science and history. Yeah, science teachers are very weird. Like, all my, all mm -hmm. the science teachers I've ever had are weird. Math teachers, it's 50-50. I always loved my history teachers. Did you? My Spanish teachers could never even speak Spanish. Yeah. I don't know. That's so. not really useful. Yeah, and I liked 50% of my gym teachers. Yeah. But I was always, Men or women? Um, I like them. I always do better with men yeah. than women. I always remember all the, the gym teachers, and, and my sister and I were having this conversation recently because she was a few years older, and we, we grew up in Rockville, Maryland. And uh, it, it turns out um, that a lot of our PE teachers were flirting with the girls and or um, having relationships with them. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and no, I never had relationships with yeah, my Yeah, even, like, teacher. some of them wound up marrying students Ew. years later. 
Yeah, so I don't know if that's like a thing with gym teachers in my vintage. Uh, I remember all the girls had crushes on some of the gym teachers. Um, but, you know, that seemed harmless, albeit weird enough. No, mine were all like grandpas. Yeah. Oh, well, they were probably left around from when they were teaching yeah, people my age. There was no crushes. Yeah, okay, that's good. I think that's much healthier. Yeah. I had one teacher I had a crush on, and it was funny because she wasn't physically attractive, but she had a British accent. Uh-huh. She was a science teacher, and I don't know what it is uh, about a prepubescent or pubescent me uh, and accent that you're just really mm. cool. Mm, yeah. So she seemed good looking just because she sounded good looking. Yeah. I don't, I had a crush once on like my diving coach, but never a teacher. Yeah. Huh. That's a, you were a diver? Yeah, when I was little. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, well, how little? Um, so I was like probably 10 to 12. Okay. And you dove off that really high thing and did twists yeah, and Yeah, I stuff? would do three meter, five meter, seven meter, and 10 meters. Wow. Yeah. Huh. And your mom was a gymnastics coach. Did that correlate to diving? Because it's yeah. similar skills, right? Yeah, it's it's very similar, but it's different. And in diving, you go head first, and in gymnastics, you go feet first. I see. Like when you land. Yeah, I don't even understand like that whole twisting your body in midair. How does that? What do you even use as points of reference? How do you even maneuver while you're it's, flying through the air? Well, you practice before on dry land. You can't go very far, though. So they put you on the belt, and then you practice it. So when you, by the time you do it, it's muscle memory. And then when, once you hit the water, yeah. they'll spot you once or twice, your coach. And then you just kind of do it from muscle memory. Oh. But then I quit because I just, like, dance better. And then I dance. I got you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't drown dancing, and that's useful. Yeah. And Hardly dance, ever. Yeah. And then I did swimming. And then I quit that because the water was cold mm. um, and dirty. And I don't like dirty water. That's like a big pet peeve of mine. Well, I don't think anyone really likes dirty water. No, but like if there's a Band-Aid in a pool, I, oh, won't, yeah. I, I won't get in it. Or like if a hair touches me in a pool, I'm out. Yeah, what if it's your own? I don't care. I Well, I don't even own a hairbrush. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't own a hairbrush. How does your hair get I in cannot, the position it's in currently? I cannot brush my hair. You use your hands? Yeah. No, I just like this is my hair. Like I don't brush it ever. Really? Yeah, I don't brush it. How does it not not? I don't know. I use conditioner. Really? I also wash my hair every night, which, like, most girls yeah. do not do that. Huh. I think I'm, like, the only girl I know that washes my hair every single night. What, like, for your wedding, didn't you do, like, a French braid or something? Well, I had a hairstylist. Oh, so she could. Yeah, like, could. other people can brush my hair, but I cannot brush uh. my hair because I get so, like, I will throw up if I have hair on me. Right. And, and like, if... Right. Yeah, just having a hairbrush in my house, right. it has to be outside. It cannot be inside. Is that why you like me so much? Because there's no threat of getting <laughs> yeah, hair on bald, you? Yeah, you're bald, you're bald. But Weston has a hairbrush, and he brushes his hair. Yeah. Huh. Can he brush your hair? No. Uh, I don't like my hairbrush. What's the What's the thing with hair? I mean, hair can be dirty. I'm with you there. Okay. But, it but it's all not always started dirty. on yeah. Thanksgiving in yeah. third grade. Okay. <laughs> Is it a hairy turkey? <laughs> so close. Uh, it's a hairy stuffing. Uh, I don't I was like stuffing. Eating stuffing yeah. and a ha- hair got wrapped around my tongue. I can like, oh, uh, I'm like gagging yeah. thinking of about it right, right now. Right. And then ever since then, I've never liked hair. I don't want it on me. I don't care if it's my own. Right. Like I just it makes huh. I'm like nauseous even thinking about uh, it. Okay, we'll go away from that. I but, have a lot of pet peeves that are really freaking weird. Right, but you accumulated that one and didn't. Uh, hold it against Thanksgiving. No, but now every time I eat stuffing, I'm like, it's like I I have this fear in my head and it sounds like Jaws is coming. Right, dead on, dead on. Yeah, and then when I eat the first bite, then I'm okay, but I have to give you uh, the first bite. I'm going to have to leave, you know, like a hairbrush or some hair at your seat one day. No, oh my gosh, it'd be like if I was ever in like prison or someone kidnapped me, Yeah. I would rather like do anything than have that's how they torture you they get yeah. the confession out of you yeah or if they like put a clay pot in a room with me i cannot be near clay pots clay pots clay pots clay pots one time i lived does in that Chicago. come up a lot <laughs> if you have a pot and you have flowers in it it cannot be clay right huh. like pottery i can't be near it so you don't go to one of those little places uh, where yeah, you no. make your own uh, stuff or whatever it's like nails on a chalkboard to me one the whole time, process the 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 painting it, the yeah. molding it, the 
kiln, touching I think they it. call it. Touching it. One uh, time I got Does it correlate to Play-Doh? Are you good with Play-Doh? I'm good with Play-Doh. Huh. I like the dryness of it. Uh, um, one time I got a gift, and it was a, a flower and a clay pot. Right. And I was living in Chicago. And my mom was in Cincinnati, and I talked about it so much that she drove up on a weekend to come get the clay pot out of my apartment. Huh. Like, it was wow. that bad. You got a good mom. I can't touch it. Did you play uh, in the mud when you were a kid? Like, little mud patties and stuff like I that? I played in the sand. Yeah, I that's okay? Florida raised. Wow. So. Okay. Yeah, I guess you didn't have a lot of mud. Yeah, <laughs> there was no mud. No. Well, I, I feel closer to you, Liv. I, ho- I hope our listeners do, too. This is a lot they of really good neurotic. information. I am neurotic. Well, I you're definitely a... neurotic. Now they understand just how neurotic. And uh, I think it gives a lot of ideas for gifts to yeah. give to you. Uh, sponsor, potential sponsor uh-huh. opportunities. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, cleaning swabs, rubbing alcohol. Yep. Uh, my, borax. Or... My friend's a therapist, and she she says I need Your to get Your friend? A... Is that what you call them? Yeah. Do you pay her money? <laughs> no, I don't. She's mm-hmm. actually, like, why not? She's a texture therapist. Uh. So she deals, she says her biggest client is people with Sharpies. Like, people, uh. like, the noise of a pen or a Sharpie. Yeah. It drives them nuts, and yeah. she's like, "You need to come to texture therapy, yeah. because all your issues are texture things." I definitely have some sounds. Some of my kids have sound things. One of them had um, uh, basically didn't like certain shapes and circles in particular, like a whole what? thing of. See, that's weird. And and, and again, they gave but, like therapy. Like a circle. With, yeah, like I don't know, like a bowl full of marbles, or or anything that was a whole bunch of little circles, sometimes naturally occurring, like. When bubbles come off a sponge, that would really bother that child. Really? Yeah, but that, there's a word for it. I'm sure our listeners will, will tell us what it is. But there's a there's an actual phobia or condition of um, circles. Of circles, fear of circles or discomfort around circles, and the uh, I think they call it cognitive behavioral therapy is what they use. And then uh, you have to like. I'm touch... sure your friend, quote unquote, yeah. told you about that. She was like, basically, we just make you like right. sit. You would sit in trash cans of, like, hair. Right, right. Until you, like, get over it. Yeah. Did, did she do that for you? No, I was, like, over my dead body. Yeah, like, right. No way I'm, I'm doing that. Right, and then, yeah, you really didn't need it. Yeah. So, well, I feel closer to you. I think this has been a great opportunity for us to talk, get to know you better. Our listeners probably feel closer to you as well and uh, probably have a lot of self-help mechanisms that they might yeah, have to I'm share with you. Yeah, I'm probably going to get a lot of DMs in my inbox about other hair phobias. Yeah. And clay pot phobias. Yeah, and do not send me a clay pot, please. Not please. especially, especially not one with a hair in it. Uh, so, yeah, please uh, don't. Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks for sharing. I appreciate <laughs> it. I, uh, it's like a little therapy session. I needed it. Yeah, and like all good therapy sessions, this is all the time we have. <laughs> Sorry, Mom.